In the previous videos, we've been talking a lot about persistence and malware development. In this video, I want to upgrade the things a little bit better. Now, the main problem with persistence is the physical part where we need to allocate and drop our files to the disk in order to be able to survive a potential reboot or RAM memory, memory cleanup. Now, that's the main issue, but in this video, I'm going to give you one nice solution, and this solution in that case is called ADS, or it stands out for Alternative Data Stream. Now, what is ADS and why it's so big of a deal? ADS is essentially a fork of your files, and that's a specific feature for Windows and its NTFS file structure. You can imagine it like that. You have your standard file.txt, and this file can be anything. It can be a txt, it can be an image, it can be a registry file, an exe, a DLL, or anything else, as soon as we need to have a right access to it. So we can create a file, or drop a file, or read a file, but we need to have a right access to it. Now imagine the file that txt is having some kind of a standard contents like uh, this is my text file. But if we have write access, we can also fork this file and create an alternative stream with something else. So in that case, we can embed different text like this is not my text. And also we can embed anything else. We can embed the other files. We can embed executables. We can embed any form of scripts, including that PS1, including that JS, and including that VBS. And not only that, we can execute the script just by reading the ADS itself. I know that sounds crazy, it is, and now let's see it in practice. If I switch back to my command VM machine, I'm gonna set up a very, very simple demo. I'm going to open PowerShell and I'm going to go to my downloads folder. So there I have a file called test.txt. I'm going to remove it just because we can set it set up brand new so we can see how everything's been done. Now we can operate for a new ADF, ADS from PowerShell and CMD, but I personally find it more easy to engage it using the CMD and not the PowerShell. So if I go to downloads now, you can see that it's completely empty, and now I can create a very simple file, for example, notepad test.txt. Inside that test.txt, I'm gonna create it and just type anything random. This is my text. I'm gonna save it, pause it, and that's it. If I do DAR, you can see the file is there and it's present. Now here comes the cool part. You can pretty much have any content, including exe, and make a fork that specific file and let's showcase that with calc.exe. So I can do type which is CMD's variation of cat. So type C Windows System32 calc.exe and I'm gonna redirect that into s.txt and the special syntax for ADS it's column and then my ADS name. In that case let's call that data. Now keep in mind that in real life scenario don't call your ADS anything related to ADS or anything related to your malware, payload, or anything else because that might get you detected. Now, ADS is already injected. If I do DIR, I can see nothing is there. If I open the folder with, with my explorer.txt, we can see only the test.txt. You may think, okay, but enable hidden items. There you go. Nothing else beside the desktop.in file. And you may ask in that point, Okay, I'll say, but how we can see the ADS file or the ADS content because it's not really a file. And the answer is quite simple. You can use DIR slash R and just here na and now it's visible. So it's not hidden, but you need to use the specific R fact in order to see it. And now here comes the question. So we've embedded calc.exe into a text file, but can we possible possibly execute it? And the answer is yes. Now here, I am going to drop a link to that GIST repository, which is going to be found in the video description, so you can take a look. Special thanks to the creator of this GIST because it has a lot of content inside. This material explains how you can engage with the ADS. On the first hand side, it explains various ways on how you can add content to different file stream. 
then explains how you can extract or read content from this file stream and then we have a giant heading explaining how we can execute content from this alternative data stream we can we have many options here we can directly start new process using wmi we can start if it's dll we can directly inject it and start it using run dll32 if it's a specific script like VBS or WScript or PowerShell, we can right off the bat read the script and then just execute it just like that. So we have plenty of options including service executables, regedit and so on on how you can directly execute stuff from this ADS. And in that case, to keep things super simple, I'm going to use that WMIC example. So I've already done that. I'm going to just do control r i'm going to do wmic just so i can look up the command and now if i do wmic process call create pass the full path to my test.txt and specify column data then the calculator should appear now it does not really matter if it's just calculator or any kind of malware it's going to execute just the same way here i want to pause the video just to say massive massive thanks to my paid sponsors you mean the world for me if you guys also have further appreciation to my work, don't hesitate to become a Patreon and there you can access a lot of projects which I'm sure you can find handy. First, you're going to get access to Shadowburn, my private hacker, which currently is capable of evading some of the most known EDRs. Also, you're going to get access to Haunt, my partial C2 agent for the mythic C2 server. And um, not only that, you're going to get access to all the videos applicable only to Patreon, plus other projects, minor ones, which I'm sure you can also find handy. Thank you so much. I'll see you there and moving on. Now, in order to make things a little bit fancy, I have prepared two demos for you guys. The first demo is using my Greenshot. Now, why Greenshot? Because usually if you go to Startup, this is the startup folder where some programs are living, which are going to be executed as soon as the, the machine starts. When you install Greenshot, Greenshot by default starts on your system when it's installed because you might need it. Of course, you can disable it by going to the task manager, then going to the startup and then disabling from there. But you can also remove it from this folder. Now, the point is that if you install Greenshot, you're going to most likely have replication here on the startup folder and then you can also modify it now if you go to this startup folder location i'm gonna open my cmd i can go cd into here do dir and again see just greenshot lnk file but if i do dir slash r i've already embedded cog.exe into the greenshot link now that proves that you can essentially inject and create ads out of any file no matter what it is you can use image, you can use shortcut things, you can use exe, dls, or anything in between. In that case, I've injected the ADS to the link of the green shot, which is going to be auto started. And the main idea for that is because you do not raise much suspicion. Now, after that's the case, all I want to do is embed that into my PowerShell profile. So the next time PowerShell is started, the green shot ADS is going to be executed and then our payload, in that case calc, will be present again. Let's do it, which in that case is that WMIC process call create the full path to the Greenshot link application and then follow on and our ADS, which is again data. Just to verify it works, it works, we have the calculator popped up. So what I can do is I can copy this command. I can do notepad profile to open my PowerShell profile and just embed the command in here. After I save it and close my PowerShell session, as soon as the next time I start PowerShell, I'm going to also see the calculator being present. And once again, you don't have any files created here, but just a fork of your green.lnk file, which is, I think, harder to find. Now, the next demo is also interesting because it is about creating scheduled tasks. Now, all these commands are going to be provided into the links of this video, so just check the description and take a look for yourself. But essentially, in order for this command to work, we would need the admin access to the system because at the end, we want to start a scheduled task. So I'm going to copy the command. Then inside the PowerShell window, I'm going to actually clear my previous persistence method, which is that just not make some kind of a conflict and issues and now i'm gonna open a new powershell but this time as administrator so run as admin 
maximize that thing and paste the command. The command is all simple. It's going to do one scheduled task. It's going to create one. The task name is going to be ATS underscore task. And then the task command is going to be essentially the same WMIC process call create. It's going to point to our test.txt and our ADS. It does not matter to which ADS you point to, just point to the right one where your payload actually is. Then this, the slash SC is going to determine where the schedule task is going to trigger. In that case, is the logon. Then, then the priority is going to be highest. If I run that, we can see that the schedule task is successfully created. So in that case, I can just simply reboot the machine and see if the schedule task works. Now, if I just need to log in, type my password, wait a little bit, cross my fingers, and if everything's all right, boom, we have the cog.exe. And now for the last part, I want to show you and actually answer one of your questions. And that is, can I engage with ADS programmatically? The answer is yes, you can. Yesterday, I was digging into that topic and actually updated my offensive C++ repository. So if you go to the offensive C++ main, then you go to the staging techniques. Then inside the staging techniques, you have ADS stage. And yes, you can use ADS to stage your payload. Now, this code snippet is very simple. It showcases essentially how you can read and write to the ADS using C language. But I think you can find the useful part of it on your own. So essentially, you have two functions. One is read from ADS, which is going to find the ADS stream and, of course, read it. Then the first function is write to ADS, which is going to have some kind of a byte or data or a content, and it's going to append it or write it to the specific ADS stream. Now I'm going to compile this code. In that case, the code is going to create a new file called example.txt. The stream name is going to be my stream, and the data is going to be some random text which is going to be appended. But imagine what might happen if this is a payload in binary format. Now, in order to test it, I'm going to just copy the path. I'm going to open PowerShell. I'm going to actually cd into the directory itself. And now from there, I can do just execute ads.exe. In that case, we can see that everything should be fine. It was executed and now we have example.txt. In that case, the example.txt is completely empty because we didn't write the original file. But if I do cmd.exe slash c dir slash r, we can indeed see that the ADS was created, which in that case is my stream. So what we can do is in that case, do that example.txt and now do colon and then my stream, which is going to effectively retrieve the content which was saved to the stream itself. Now with that, this is how you can engage with ADS and essentially the limit is the sky. As mentioned and as shown in, in the documentation, you have plenty of ways on how you can engage with the ADS. You can store scripts, you can store binaries, you can store DLLs, and you can store any payload of your choosing inside any file to where you have a right access. With that, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was useful. And if that was the case, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the like button, which helps the channel so much. I'm going to be reading the comments for all your feedback and every feedback is deeply, deeply welcomed. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye.